this about uh, it's preseason game number two, and we got uh, pre and post game coverage for you guys this weekend, right? There. Sure, do yes, six o'clock pregame with you and Eric, and then yeah. we'll have a post game until two a.m. Two a.m. Nine o'clock kick. Two a.m. So yeah, so uh, check us out. Uh, we'll, we'll get you right for the game pregame, and then we'll talk about it afterwards, taking your calls and things like that. We love to do that. See if you can make Woolchuck mad about a preseason game. <laughs> That would be uh, Ooh, entertaining if, if, if you could do that. If we can get some sound of Atolo drawing Walchuk off sides because it's 1.30 in the morning, he's a little bit cranky, it's preseason, you know he wants the, the meaningful stuff, uh, that would be pretty special. I'll put my odds on Broadus though, being first to get annoyed. I, I Remember wonder you last year? Yeah, yeah tore he, that was, guy up. he was wonder, biting it, folks. I wonder which week, though, that will be the one where I just totally lose it. You know what? Can we? We ought to have a. We ought over have a, under week. week yeah, five. Week yeah. Six. What week will I just like? Someone will say something that will just totally drive me into like, you know. Oblivion. You know if that, if that Niners game goes bad, I think that's a good one that I've circled. Uh, and then of course Aaron Rodgers, if he does that BS like he always See, does. That's where two, that's where we got to worry about. The, that's where the demon is going to come out of me. Yeah. yeah. You, you go out October sixteenth. October sixteenth in L.A. against Kellen Moore and the Chargers. Oh, that's, that's, that's the set-off night. That that could be a very, yeah. And that's Monday night. That's so a, that's late night, a little bit that's, grouchy. That's do, oh, that's do a show up till the pregame show, and then. And then we go till 1 a.m. So that's a that's like a, yeah, it's a 12-hour day, something like 14. that. 14. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> <laughs> well, don't worry. We'll take, Gavin, no, he, show you saved yourself with the or something like that. You weren't, you weren't dead balls on the 12. I know, you're right. You're right about that. All right, guys, uh, we got some Cowboys that, you know, we're running out of time here. If they break camp, today is just kind of a walkthrough, and then they're getting ready to go play the Seattle Seahawks in this, uh, you know, preseason. And I always like playing. Seattle used to be one of those teams that, like, you, you kind of hated playing in the preseason because they beat you up a little bit, you know. I was always like, ah, dang, why do we have to schedule them? The, the trip, you know, the fact that they're on the coast – Cowboys are already on the coast. It'll be a lot easier than what they dealt with this Jacksonville. That was a mistake, you know. But, hey, go enjoy Metallica, you know, for the couple of days it's going to be out there at at and And see if Max Scherzer's out there while you're at it. Yeah, yeah that'll be a good And tell, if you get the playlist, let us know, by the way, too. All right, I got some Dallas Cowboy guys. And tell me if you think the same, some guys that need to kind of show up. I'll throw out a name or two, and you just kind of give it to me. They feel like that maybe these guys need to, you know, they're running out of time. And uh, but I'm gonna throw the first name I'm gonna throw out there for you guys is Jalen Brooks, the wide receiver from uh, from South Carolina. I felt like going into camp that you know he was a guy that was a little bit kind of an unknown late pick. Has kind of shown up really well last week. Maybe not benefited very much from uh, the quarterback play that hurt him a little bit. Mm -hmm. But it seemed like the game was really sped up for him, mm -hmm. and he didn't handle that very well. And he was one of those guys that I felt like was battling for that sixth wide receiver spot. It was nice to see Simi Fajoko, kind of a friend of the show, show up and do some things. Dennis Houston also played pretty well for you last week. Are we at the point now where Jalen Brooks, Zach, Eric, Gavin, does he need to have a much better performance than he had last week against Jacksonville? I would say yes. Uh, I think that practice he's been dominant. And I think that the word coming out of, uh, you know, camp was from the coaches after they studied the film, you know, that wasn't the same guy we've seen on the practice field. But you've got to be able to translate that into game action. So I think, you know, Simi was the opposite. Simi hasn't been great in practice, but then he was really good during the game. So I think Jalen Brooks, it, his special teams attributes, I think are going to help him a lot. I think he's a better special teams player than Simi is, but he's got to make sure he can translate that to actual in-game reps. Yeah, I, I think he's already played himself to a point where he's for sure a practice squad guy. I mean, he's guaranteed locked that way. And then it's like, can you crack the 53? They're going to have to make some tough decisions, and, and you can – you can help yourself in those tough decisions if they can recall back to an in-game moment or two or three where it was like, hey, look at this, look at this, he can do it. So I, he's probably the guy I'm most excited to see because, I mean, you still, even to this day, we're looking at clips of him doing doing nice things in yeah. practice still. With the ones as well. Right. So I'm, I'm hopeful for him that, yeah, he can make a couple of plays. Does Malik Davis need to show better than what he did last week in this football game? I, I'm looking at him, I'm thinking about – Deuce Vaughn is, you know, battling right now, I believe, for that second spot. Rico Dowdle, I think, is a better pass protector. I mean, the runner, they love Rico Dowdle, but he always seems to get hurt. Is this kind of a, a kind of a, a, a make-or-break game for Malik Davis here? 
I think they're always going to need guys like him. I think he's solid enough um, that you'll be on the periphery of the roster, and he's he's not so impressive that a, a team's going to poach him. So I, I don't think he needs to have a huge game to stick around in the Cowboys' plans because he's a good emergency running back to have if you have multiple injuries. A at this point, is it possible that he's so impressive? I don't know. But, man, how amazing would it be if he could come out and have a big game and get us excited about another full-size guy back there? I just I don't know if it's possible at this point in his development. Yeah, it's, it's, it's Hunter Lipke, right? If Hunter Lipke looks yeah. good, does he end up taking Malik Davis' spot? So I think, yes, because of Hunter Lipke and how they're really using him as a running back and not a fullback. Right. That's where things start to get a little bit fringy for Malik Davis. Yeah, I feel like, though, with Hunter Lipke, I, you know, you could kind of – maybe him and Davis, you could – tag them together yeah one of those guys is going to have to kind of show up and you know I, I know that pro football focus had Hunter Lipke's pass blocking is some of the best but I went back and watched that tape it was a couple of times there where it was check and then get out in the route check and get out in the route there wasn't actually the one time that he got pass blocking responsibilities he got kind of tossed mm -hmm. to the side and I'm not nothing against Hunter Lipke in North Dakota State because that whole nation or that, that, that whole fan base came after me about that. But that guy, he's got to show a little bit more. On the defensive side of the ball, I think this is a huge game from Jabril Cox. Mm, you know, because with you. the linebackers, to me, are all showing up. And, yeah. you know, we'll see what happens with Malik Jefferson. I'm not really counting on him. Harper played very well. Overshone played very well. This is where I think now that Jabril Cox has got to step up. He can't just have a game where it's two tackles and, you know, and he doesn't look like he's playing with quickness or any awareness or anything like that. So I think this is a super important game for him. I think this is a really important game. We'll see what happens uh, with Nashawn Wright in his situation as well. Eric Scott, I thought last week played. He, was, he admitted being nervous you about the it. game. You know, he admitted being nervous about that. One of those guys, him, Makwamu, didn't play particularly well and that last was week. Surprising as well. yeah. to see him struggle. It was very, it was very surprising. Keep an eye on a guy like Josh Butler. I, I know that's a practice squad guy potentially there, but let's see if he could find a way to push some things into maybe because he's going to get some more opportunity. Because just like what we talked about with T.J. Bass. Mm -hmm. There's some guys that show that they can punch in a certain category, a weight class. We'll see if these guys like T.J. Bass and, and, and Scott and then also Butler can fight at a higher weight to make this football team. Can it be tough for those defensive backs when you're not getting the pressure of your starting defensive line? I mean, you're having to defend – for longer, maybe your technique is yeah. sort of refined around the idea that Mike is going to be buzzing the quarterback about two and a half seconds. No after question, the snap. no question that it, it, that would help your situation. But you also have to be able to show up. Maybe the fact that you know with Scott playing off as much as he was, you know he's a guy that has played some off technique and has looked pretty good doing it. Hmm. I just want to see him play with more aggressiveness, and because I think he's capable of doing that. But also too. With Wright and McQuamu as well, that those guys I think maybe not so much with McQuamu, but Nation Wright's kind of looked good in some practices, looked bad in some practices. His health has been a little bit some question right now, but let's see if he in fact can kind of keep his spot on this team.